Mm. So mm. that's our Dave McMenamin saying that LeBron is not a fan of all the love that Kawhi gets. Mm. Skip, what do you make of this? Okay, Stephen A., so let's be fair about this. It's not that LeBron has said anything negative about Kawhi Leonard. It's according to Dave McManaman, a reporter, that LeBron just won't comment on Kawhi. That's the way I'm taking this, if I'm, if I'm reading it correctly. It, it's, it's not so much that, to use the old expression, LeBron is damning with faint praise. He just won't even, he won't give him any praise. And we know that LeBron can be the ultimate diplomat, ambassador for the game of basketball. And usually when he's asked, about an opponent, he'll have something to say, often something nice to say about his opponents. So that's the perspective we're talking about. Now let's talk about what happened the two times they faced in the finals. To me, the first one obviously was saved. LeBron's legacy was saved by the Ray Allen three from the corner in game six that forced overtime, which the Heat won and then won game seven. LeBron was big in game seven. LeBron would have been the GOAT of Game 6, and I don't mean the greatest of all times. I mean the literal GOAT. If the Spurs had closed that deal, it seems like we're always talking about the Spurs can't close the deal, but if they had closed that deal, I think Kawhi might have been the MVP of that series. He would have at least, at least have been a prime candidate to be MVP of that series. The next time, two years later, 2014, he, he was, I'm sorry, uh, <coughs> 20, what am I, 2016, I'm, I'm losing track, 2014, yeah, he was the MVP of the next time they met when the Spurs won in five games. So that's two times against LeBron that Kawhi could have been the MVP and he was one time. I think that, that Kawhi does the best job of anybody I have seen on LeBron. I think he's, the, he's LeBron's toughest matchup. Nobody can stop LeBron. But I think Kawhi bothers LeBron as much as any defender in basketball because of Kawhi's height, length, strength, quickness, leaping ability, anticipation. He, he's all over LeBron. LeBron's going to get his numbers, but he's going to have to really work hard for his numbers. Now, to, to LeBron's point, if there's any negativity, if there's, there's any, um, what's the best word, resentment of Kawhi's rise towards superstar and the best two-way player in basketball. I get this if, Le if LeBron thinks this. LeBron toils under the, the burden of expectation and pressure that only a superstar can feel. That only the, for, for the longest time, LeBron was viewed as the best player in the game. That kind of pressure and expectation. Nobody expects that much even yet from Kawhi Leonard. And to that point, you know how I feel. Too often, Kawhi disappears in big games, in big moments. Zero points in game four of the fourth quarter back in Oklahoma City. Last night, I, I don't know where he was in the fourth. I don't know if he got taken out of the offense by Tony Parker. But as we talked about earlier, he got up four shots in the fourth quarter, made two of them, made one out of two free throws for five total points. It wasn't enough. Too often, Kawhi gets as quiet on the court as he is off the court. So that's what holds him back from being superstar. So if that's why LeBron is reticent to proclaim him a superstar, I get that. But in the end, I think it sticks in his craw that, that Kawhi could have been the MVP of those two series, and, and it's more of a finals issue than maybe a Kawhi has arrived issue. Your thoughts? <clears throat> well, since folks want to speculate, let me say this. I haven't interviewed LeBron James one-on-one -on -one in years, but I've spoken to him on several occasions. At no time has he ever been disrespectful or dismissive of an opponent, particularly one that has a championship pedigree, which obviously Kawhi Leonard has earned. And every star that I've ever spoken to, whether it's Jordan with Joe Dumas or, you know, or, or somebody else, you usually respect the dude that's a tough competitor, like Kobe gave props to Tony Allen. He didn't just wait until he was retiring to do that. Kobe always recognized the fact that Tony Allen was one tough defender and gave him props where props was due. Stars don't have a problem giving props to individuals who show up and play them tougher because they believe ultimately it makes them better, right? That's number one. Number two, if you're LeBron, you also have to take into account how insulting it is, not just for the point you made about how Kawhi Leonard didn't have that pressure, 
But what about who Kawhi Leonard is playing with and who Kawhi Leonard was playing for? Now, granted, you look at LeBron having D. Wade and Bosh and all of that stuff. Well, D. Wade wasn't healthy. And as good as Bosh is, he wasn't Tim Duncan. All right, and then when you talk about the combination of Tim Duncan, Mono Ginobili, and Tony Parker, you're talking about a team with uh, um, significant cohesiveness because they've been playing with together for years. And then we all recognize that Greg Popovich is the best coach in the game. And so you've got that guy coaching against LeBron James and coaching his team to collectively defend LeBron James. Now let's also take into account the fact that Kawhi Leonard essentially ascended Skip because even though he played well on both ends of the floor, averaging 17 and 7 with 1.6 steals a game, if I remember correctly, keep in mind that the big time, the big moment with, that arrived for Kawhi was in game three of that finals in 2013, 2014, when he dropped 29 after the series was tied 1-1. He dropped 29 in Miami, and he outplayed LeBron James for that game where LeBron just had 22 points, and it was when Popovich was punching him in his chest yep. affectionately, like, way to go, because he had challenged Kawhi Leonard before that to really step up and embrace the challenge of going up against the world's best player at the time. But in that final series, as I look at the numbers here, a series in which Miami lost 4-1 and were outscored by 72, uh, by 72 points in the losses. They won their one game by two. They lost their game, the four games by a combined 72 points, which was a 70-point difference you brought up on many occasions. LeBron James, 25, 35, 22, 28, 31, and 10. And so when I look at it from that perspective, and I think about the absence of help, that he had because the Dwayne Wade we're seeing today was not the Dwayne Wade in that finals, all right? LeBron is sitting back and like, I'm going up against Ka Kawhi Leonard with Tim Duncan before Father Time, with Tony Parker on Manu Ginobili, all right, and Greg Popovich coaching against me. And what I got here, we're the reigning defending champions, but at the same time, they had let go of Mike Miller, the previous summer, if I remember correctly. Still had Ray Allen and stuff like that. But Miami had dissipated to some degree where their struggles appeared more pronounced. And you just sensed something was wrong. And so when we look at it from that perspective, it, it, it can be a bit annoying for somebody to try to elevate somebody to your stratosphere when, A, the dues hadn't been paid, B, they're in a similar position, and C, they're ignoring the precarious circumstances in which you're working under. Okay, so if I hear you correctly, you could see where LeBron would have a little resentment of the elevation of Kawhi's star. No, I don't see him as having a, a resentment of the elevation of Kawhi. I see him having a resentment of the questions coming from reporters who are not taking the totality of the situation into consideration. If it's, 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 it's the equivalent of somebody asking you a stupid question. If they ask you a stupid question or something that don't make any damn sense in your mind, that may annoy you, not necessarily the player. Who doesn't know that Kawhi Leonard can play? Who doesn't know that the Kawhi Leonard is a star. Who doesn't know that Kawhi Leonard is a star because of what he does, not just offensively, but primarily on a defensive end. He's a headache for anybody. Anybody. This is the reigning two-time defensive player of the year. This brother can play. Oh, you, of course you got to respect him, but the problem is if somebody comes up to you and acts like, oh, it's just him against you, and he don't have anybody around him, and you're just coming up short, and not taking into consideration the conditions under which you're working. That's a problem. It's a problem okay, when that's okay, ignored. But, but you just detailed why you discount Kawhi's impact in those two finals, because he had more help, in your view, than LeBron did. So, so why wouldn't you think LeBron would also discount it to the point he just wouldn't even want to comment on it, yet it, it still validates the question. It's OK to ask him. What do you think, LeBron, of a guy who, by the way, just finished ahead of you in the MVP voting? Barely, but just ahead. Kawhi well, I didn't mean it like that. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I'm not saying that somebody presented the question like that. I'm certainly not trying to impugn reporters in that regard. I'm saying to treat him like Kawhi Leonard is better than him.
I'm saying you got to take all of those things into consideration. It makes sense this year why Kawhi Leonard would finish ahead of most guys in the MVP voting. It, it makes sense why somebody would look at Kawhi as a, a, a viable and valid adversary of LeBron James. But when you ask the question, you also got to bring to the table why you consider it to be such, and you got to take all conditions into consideration. Okay, you but, can't just ignore the conditions. But remember, we, we reacted the next day after on TNT inside the NBA after one of the Thursday night games. On Friday, we reacted to Charles Barkley and Kenny Smith proclaiming Kawhi Leonard a superstar, and both of them said, hey, he's now the best two-way player in basketball. If my okay, memory serves, fair. I think no, they both no. did. So why well, wouldn't then reporters that, then ask LeBron, what's your view of Kawhi? Not, not that I'm they're... Just think yeah. I, I apologize. You're right. I'm wrong about that because I'm thinking along the lines of just like that reporter the other day that asked Damian Lillard that question about you. You see okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm thinking about questions of that magnitude. I totally forgot about Barkley and Kenny Smith bringing up the comparisons. And if a reporter rolled up to LeBron and asked it in that fashion, I definitely think it's valid. I'm just thinking of folks going up to a superstar, the caliber of a LeBron James, yeah. and saying something about this guy, trying to antagonize him, when in fact you're not taking all of the challenges Challenges into consideration. I look at the conditions under which somebody plays. I covered Allen Iverson skip for 10 years. Who did he have to play with offensively? Yep. Is I know he shot 41% from the field, but if you looked at the team that he was playing with offensively, because defensively they were stout, but offensively, if you looked at the team he was playing with, it's a miracle Allen Iverson shot 30%, let alone 41. So I'm just saying you take those things into consideration when you go up to these guys and ask questions that touches on their greatness. That's all I'm saying. Got it. All right. Speaking of uh, Kawhi, bottom line, are the Spurs done? <clears throat> Skip and Stephen A. will answer that question when we come back. The Heat and Raptors play in a pivotal Game 5 tonight. Series tied at 2 from Toronto. Stephen A., who you got? I'm going with the Heat. Obviously, I picked them to win this series of six games. In order to do it, they've got to win the next two games because I don't like their chances in a game seven. So I'm just sticking with my prediction, and I'll be the first to admit that it's a bit emotional because I'd much rather be in South Beach <laughs> or near South Beach than in Toronto, Canada. I'm sorry, but that's just the way that I feel. Not to take anything away from the great job that Dwayne Casey has done. Kyle Lowry had a big-time game the other night. DeMar DeRozan is not healthy. There's been three overtime games in the first four games here. Dwayne Wade put his head down and just handled business in game four. I just think without even though Whiteside is out without Valanchunas the the Heat doesn't have to worry about Toronto's interior game and as a result they just need to guard the perimeter I think as a result they will win game five they've got to win game five because I don't like their chances in a game seven that's why I'm going with them to win the next two games Skip. I am also picking with my heart I want to see Dwayne versus LeBron in the next round I can't wait I, I don't love this pick Stephen Neither A, but, but I'm going to go with Miami to win tonight. Toronto at home is a four-and-a-half-point favorite, but its stars are really slumping. DeRozan was four for 17 the other night. Kyle Lowry was two for 11, 0 for 6 from three. It degenerated into Corey Joseph or bust for Toronto. Dwayne Wade was the best player on the court, and I think he'll be again tonight, and I'm with you. This is the game that Miami needs to win to, to get into the commanding position to get to the next round. All right. Stephen A., by the way, the blue looks very nice on you. You look handsome. Well, I, well, like I it. would say this. Not, not, not as great as the white looks on you. Aww, I would say you. that. Thank oh, you. I'm looking a little that. Miami. Oh, I like well, your I'll Spurs just, colors. I'll just stay out of the way yeah. over here I in wonder front if of this love fashion. She does have that South Beach look to her right now.